Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today is gonna to be a little bit different one because I'm gonna show you how to use iMessage on your Linux machine. Now to do this, we're gonna be using software called Bluebubbles that does need to run on a real Mac. You might be able to do it on a Mac VM. I haven't tried that, but I'm doing it on a 2014 Mac mini. You can just get a dirt cheap, uh, any kind of Mac off of Craigslist or Facebook or eBay or something like that. Just needs to run the server software, runs in the background, and then we set up the client software on the Linux machine. I'm gonna walk you through all those steps. If you have any questions along the way, leave those down in the comment section below. And with that out of the way, let's jump on to the Mac mini and get the server side set up. All right, so here we are on the desktop of the Mac mini and you might notice that I'm running Catalina. Now the reason I'm running Catalina and not Big Sur is because there was changes in the API for Big Sur that block uh, Bluebubbles from creating new messages. So if you're on a client device and you try to create a new conversation, you won't be able to if your server is running Big Sur. If you're running Catalina or Blow, you're good to go. So I just downloaded this to Catalina. Hopefully that's something that they'll find a workaround for in the near future, but that's the way it is as of the time of this video. Now, before we get into any of the Blue Bubbles configuration or anything, the first thing you need to do is set up the Mac with your account enough so that you can use messages. Now, basically you just have to have your messages account and uh, your contacts synced. You don't have to do your whole iCloud thing. You can come into preferences and go to messages and then just um, sign in here if you want, or you can connect it to iCloud, however you, much you want, but the minimum you need is your messages to show up in here. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Bluebubbles configuration. So the first thing you wanna do is go out to the Bluebubble site. I have it right here and I'll put a link down in the description. There's two areas we're gonna focus on. Uh, one is the install area. So this is just a set of installation steps that take you through getting this thing set up. And this is basically what I'm gonna be doing in this video. And then there's the downloads area. This is where we're gonna go first. There's the client uh, options, and we're gonna talk about those more in, you know, later in the video. And then there's the server. This is what we're gonna install on our Mac. So you wanna click and download that. It's a relatively quick download. I've already downloaded it onto my machine. I have it here. So I'm just gonna click on this DMG and open that up. Once it opens, we'll just drag the blue bubbles into the applications folder. It takes just a few seconds. And then we can close this down, hit our command space, type in blue bubbles. You can see I have it in there already. Give this a few seconds to start up. It's probably gonna ask us if we're sure we wanna open it. Yes, we are. Okay, so this is our setup screen for Blue Bubbles, and we'll get into this in just a few seconds. But the first thing we wanna do is go into our system settings, and we're gonna to go to security and privacy, and then down to full disk access. We wanna make sure that Blue Bubbles is checked. If it's not checked already, just click on the lock icon, put in your password, and then make sure that's checked, and then you can just close out of here. Now we need to set up some of this other stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is put in a password for this server. And just because I'm just doing a test here, I'm just gonna use the word password. Obviously you don't wanna use something a little more secure than that. Now you can click this to support uh, SMS for the desktop clients. And the next things that we wanna deal with are the FCM server and the google-services.json file. So we're gonna go and set that stuff up now. If we go back to our browser, we need to go to consoles.firebase.google.com. Again, I'll have a link down in the description. You're gonna log in with your Google account and just create a new project. We're gonna call this Blue Bubbles. Make sure that uh, the Google Analytics for this project is off and then create project. Okay, our new app is created, so we can go ahead and click continue on that. Now we're in our project, we need to create a real-time database that these messages are gonna sync to. So we'll click here, create a database, pick our location, hit next, just leave that in lock mode and click enable. We'll let this finish. So now our real-time database is created, so we're gonna go into our project settings. 
our service account and we're going to generate a new private key for this project and then we're just going to save this project key locally. So now that bluebubbles.json file, if we minimize this and go into our downloads folder, we can just take this file and drag it right into our FCM server option in Bluebubble setup. So we're just going to drop that in there. And the next thing we need to do is do the Google services.json file. So in order to generate that next file, we're going to go back into our Firebase. We're going to go to our project settings and go to the general tab. And then we're going to click on this little Android icon here. And then we're going to generate our company name. So just put in something like com.yourname.bluebubbles. We're going to click register app. And then we're going to download this JSON file, just like we did last time. And then we can go back into our Bluebubble setup, into our downloads directory, and drag that Google services.json into the spot where it asked for that file. Hit continue. And at this point, the server is all set up. If you're on a mobile device, if you're doing this on an Android device or something, you can just scan that QR code for other devices. You can type in that server address with that port. So now that the server is done, let's jump onto the client computer and finish that configuration there. All right, so the server side's all set up. Now we're ready to set up the Linux client side. So here I am on my Linux installation. This is Manjaro running the KDE desktop environment, but you can install this on any distribution, any desktop environment. It doesn't matter. The way you install it may be a little bit different though. Let me show you that. If we go back out to the Bluebubble site into the downloads area, we're gonna get the client this time because we already set up the server. So we're gonna get the Linux client and it gives you some information on how to install it for different uh, versions of Linux. So if you have an Arch-based uh, distro, which I do, I'm using Manjaro, I can use the AUR, the um, application user repository. So I can just run this command and install it. If you're on something like Ubuntu, you're gonna go through and run these commands. It's really quick and, and relatively easy, just, you know, do what it says here and you'll get it installed, no problem. So for me, since I'm on Manjaro, which is an Arch-based distribution, I can get it from the AUR. So I can either run that command or I can come into my package manager and search for it in here. It's up to you whether you want to do it through a, a, you know, a graphical interface or just command line. So we're just going to apply that. And type in my password. And then just let that go. That's just uh, downloading, compiling, installing. And then when it's all done, I'll come back and show you how we get the rest of it set up. All right, so we are all installed. The transition transaction successfully finished. So we're gonna go ahead and close that. And then I am just gonna launch up Bluebubbles and go through the rest of the setup here. All we need to do is add in that server URL that we saw when we were configuring the server in the previous step and the password that we created. So again, I'm gonna pause real quick while I type that in and then come back so you don't have to watch me type in it. All right, so here we are. I have that URL plugged in and the password that we created when we were creating our server. And we're just gonna go ahead and connect now. So you can see it found our 39 chats. And then when it's all done, I'll come back and we'll send and receive some messages just so you can see this is working. All right, so the configuration's all done, the connection's done, and we can now send and receive iMessages from our Linux installation. So let's go into one of these chats and just do a test. This. Now you can see it was sent from here, it was received on the other phone. So I'm gonna run over to the other phone and send a message back just so you can see that we can receive on this side as well. So there you go. With this setup, you can send and receive iMessages from Linux. Now, some things to keep in mind is that you do need to leave that Mac running all the time that we have the server running on, and you need to leave that server software running as well. Other than that, this has worked really, really solidly for me. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comment section below. If you like videos like this and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe 
and hit that notification bell and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.